So guys, week four, we're back on the Bear Podcast Show. This week, we have Ryan Quinn, a.k.a. The Pin. We have myself, Owen, a.k.a. The Bear. And me, Sean Scullion, a.k.a. The Handsome Stranger. <laughs> and over in the corner, we have Aiden, a.k.a. The Face for Radio. <laughs> Ryan, welcome along. Thank you guys for the invite. This is, uh, I, I've known Ryan for years, so I'm sure this one's going to be a journey. Now, before we start off... Uh, Ryan, very colourful character, very big on social media, has a big story to tell. Before we get going, Ryan, I think it's better that we say there will be parts of the story out of respect we're not going to talk about. Yes. We're going to leave. Um, but everything else, we're going to get into. Yeah. We're going to hear who is the man behind the big picture on the on the, on the the meetings, boy. Who is LS what? Uh, I want to see. Well, if you don't know me, I'll give you a bit of a, a bit of an insight to who I am. Um, I'm from Arbo. Ghost to Arbo, Holy Ghost to Arbo. Two, two, we've had two, two Arbo two men. men huh? oh, we're going to have to start mixing this up. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, Brian last week. I actually listened to Brian's podcast, very good, very good. And he's actually, that's, that's who he is. <laughs> um, grew up in, no, born in Arbo, moved to Murtown, lived at the Battery Bar. Um, my granda owned it, then my father owned it, and then my cousin owned it who... He was shot dead at it. So um, uh, that's... How long ago was that? That was 1989. So it was... Um, so that was... Then we moved from there up to my granny's, Quinn. We lived there for a, a wee while. We got a house up in Ardbow. So we moved... We had, no, I actually lived in... I lived in Lakeview Cottages. That's where I was born. And then down to Murtown to the Battery. Then to my granny's in Tiernaug. Still in Murtown. And then we bought a wee cottage... Up on Kelly Canavan Road. So then, so you could have been in the red and white. Well, I was, I was. I'm, well, I'm, I'm fifty fifty. I have to say, if I see Murtown winning, I'm happy. If I see Arbo winning, I'm very There's happy. Not many Arbo men say that, hey. But not Mur- many Arbo men at all. <laughs> well, Murtown Mur- 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 beat us, beat us this year, and I didn't really. I didn't shed any tears, you know. And that's where. Yeah. What what age were you in there, Tom? I was. I was about six or seven years of age, maybe 86, 87 and moved up to Arbo. And um, I'd done a year in Murtown School, uh, St. Peter's, and then I was moved into Mullinahoe Primary School. So that's where I'd done my, I tried to do my education. It's <laughs> not what you completed. Wasn't very good at it. <laughs> so, Ryan, uh, you, obviously, everyone knows you from online. You're now uh, Jim, yeah, Meals, and Jim Fitter. Yes, of three Three businesses on the go at the moment. And social media mogul. I think you must have been one of the first men to put out a TikTok. Yeah. And then I got it deleted. Do you, deleted. Are, you th- are you talking about the same one that I'm thinking of? The Jason Rulo one. So you were your away fronts on? Yeah. The white pants? Yeah. Oh, you can't see that. It, Sorry, went, it, it went viral in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> it was an, it actually got into I Castle have. Dawson football group. But was that a TikTok? Yeah, it was, it TikTok. was a TikTok. The TikTok just started up. So <laughs> I don't still know. got it? I have, I. But we'll I get it sent through, we'll get it get, up for you. Get sent through. I, I put it back up again, but someone must have reported me because it was ticking. It wasn't that bad. I, I reported it. It hurt my eyes. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan, uh, look, listen, but you, you, you're not afraid, look, for a man that does it too, you're not afraid to put yourself out there on the social media world and... Uh, Obviously, you get the the shots with what co- with what comes with comes the trolls as well. Yeah. Uh, well, look, uh, we said we were going to get. Look, I, I was in prison. Anybody, like, we're, we're not going to go into the reasons why. But I was in prison, and when I went into prison in two thousand and five, I was in it to two thousand and eight. When I came, when I went in in two thousand and five, there was no social media. When I came out, there was Bebo. So, um, I joined Bebo, and I don't know. I just become addicted to it. Um, I suppose I, I, there's no point that I used to thrive off attention. There's no point telling me now. You know, you can walk in somewhere into a restaurant or into a cafe. I'm in the far corner, even though you'll see me doing this, this all this stuff on social media. But at the start of becoming, a, it was addicted to it, and I can remember then Facebook came out and opened the gym. But before that, there 
I can remember us boys selling stuff and put posts and stuff us drinking and do you mind the potion? Oh, do you mind oh, the time I remember the potion. That? <laughs> that, oh, that's not there yesterday no. either. So uh, then I opened the business, and for some reason, I just kept posting and posting and posting like what I was doing in the mornings, me going to the gym, and little did I know I was marketing. But I hadn't a clue that I was marketing, and everybody was going. He fucking stopped posting on on social media, you know. And I, but I just kept it going, even though people I did the, the trolls got me. They, they caught me in about when was that? They got a hold of me in about two sixteen, two seventeen. That was that Jimmy Bench carry on Johnny Johnny, Johnny Bench Bunch. Johnny Bench. And For people that don't know what we're talking about, back when that was going on, uh, somebody set up a fake profile page or a spoof ro- profile page. Of Ryan and then anything he was doing, they were mocking, and they were, yeah. some of it was quite coming up. But this is what I'm saying: that's fine if it's a wee joke. Yeah, as things move on and they get more and more serious, more and more personal, and then if it's you're a family member or another person, thing. This is what I said before one time when we were talking about it. It's not always about what affects you. If that's not hurting you and what are you not weighing, you don't care. But if your ma's getting annoyed, or your wife, or or thing, you know, that's what I was saying about the time I was being trolled. I didn't care. People's thoughts are you, you do care, and you're allowed. You, you're in a very, very good place if you say you don't really care, because we all want, to some degree, some vindication from people. You don't want people not to like you. You don't set out for everyone to like you, and once you accept that, you'll be a lot happier. But if people are continually making that personal and it's affecting and, and annoying the people that's close to you. Then it annoys you in turn, not not the, the the thing itself, but the the action and the fallout. So for any of you that don't know, that's what we were talking about. Somebody had set up a fake profile page. They had started mocking everything you were doing, and they were posting pictures, and it was getting a serious following. <laughs> and then the drama of it all started unfolding. But you were posting, you were posting then at about that. You didn't actually fully go into it and say, "Look, this is who it was." I probably would have went completely the other road. I'm being like, well, you are good enough, smart enough. I don't, you know what I don't get, but in that all we're discussing that, do you know what I don't get? Could you be barred, Sean? Could, like, could, could, could anybody annoy <clears throat> you enough that A, you've gone and set up this fake profile page, and then you haven't to log in each day and be smart and fun? Like, if you had that much time, go and work with Paddy Power, someone like that. Yeah. You know, go and do something constructive or, or have it. To, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, the person was only messing. They were running, like, I know them. They just, I suppose they're a group of friends. I, I don't know. And I don't know. Because if they were only messing sooner or later, they'd just come to you and say, hey, I was having a bit of a laugh. And, and But I actually met him and his partner recently right. at a function. See, I don't know. And I, I, was, like, I, know. I, was, I was talking to them. Like, and I, I don't know ever I know them. I don't know ever I know them. But uh, I think somebody said it to me one time, and I never ever, I never even asked you. I must have asked you at some point, but I never even know. But I, I don't care anyway. Because, But now imitation is a thing that. Yeah, they're all at somebody's. I I always thought I says to somebody, somebody, something goes, "Oh, and there's a fake page going around about you," and I was like, "What do you mean fake page? There's fake page? Obviously, you've won this or you've commented or you won something." And I was like, "Well, you haven't made it high. You have somebody haven't hit me." <laughs> but it uh, that was the first I heard of of that real like that campaign and that thing. But that's becoming a massive talking point now. And to be fair, you're a big enough boy. Mm-hmm. You can t- like, and I don't mean you take it. We can always say you're big enough, boy. We're not dismissing anyone that takes that that takes that to heart. But you, you, you know, you'll have worse said about you. Mm-hmm. Look, it's it's okay doing it to me, and like, as people listen to this, it's something you shouldn't do, right? Mm-hmm. Because there is people have, you know, done, you know, couldn't couldn't take it and and left this earth because so, of it. And I, that's so, so, so that I, there, I, that, I, I I condemn it completely now. That there, that's something you know, that you only become more aware of now. Yeah. And I know it's vogue for people to talk mental health, and I know it's vogue for a lot of PTs at a time to talk mental health. And and but I'm be, I was being dead serious, but because someone was throwing that about because it was vogue to say it. But it is an, a, a a thing that if somebody's in a bad place, you could be the last straw. Yeah, that stupid joke you made could be the last straw that that broke the back. Yeah. So it is something I, I honestly believe ideas should be uploaded to social media. Because if you're going to troll someone and you're going to say something nasty about somebody or like the likes of that tattle shit, mm-hmm. it's a sewer pit. Own it. You're going to say something about them. Say it. Yeah. 
Say it like you would, like social media has now become a thing. Say it like you're standing in front of them. But that says more about them than it does about you. Oh, massively. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like them comments that they're making towards you or whatever they're doing anyway. It's not about you. It's more about them. It's the problems that they I, have gone on. on I, get you, a bit of, I get a bit of thrilling there, but a few months back there, I don't know. I was asked to do an article in, in, in one of those Belfast lives or something. And the reporter talked to me. He's a good lad and all. Started talking about different stuff and brought up prison and whatnot, as I say, don't don't want to talk about it anymore. And I was looking at it and, and but I was I was fit to deal with it, right? But I was looking at all these comments about me, right? From these people. Nasty comments. And then all these comments about me that were nice comments. But these were people I didn't know. Yeah. Arguing with each other below a picture of me. And I seen guys like it didn't make sense. Well would it would he hear this? You're obviously been on social media. I'm only new to this here. Like, it was only a couple of weeks ago he was setting up. Superstar now. Superstar now. But anyway, um, this keen gentleman, I'll call him that there, uh, in work, in the toilets from work, must have been sitting on the toilet, watching the podcast. Thinking so of thanks, Sean. Thinking of me, watching the podcast. Stroking himself. But he read a nice <laughs> wee note on this A4 piece of paper. Not so nice, but read this nice wee note just what for say? me. What does it say? Um, the handsome stranger is a wanker. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I have, right? to, I, I have to disagree with that. Uh, that's not, that's not true. Well, maybe not since he's fourteen. I, I th- look, I laughed about it, and uh, I just think there's whoever this is is just a cross wee man. Just needs a wee bit of a need a bit of loving, bit of a hug. Mm-hmm. But it was so ironic because the piece of paper he wrote on was a twenty four seven helpline, right? Uh-huh. So. Get a call, kid. <laughs> but then, you, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? No, I, yeah, I, I don't yeah, get yeah. it. I don't get it. Why, if somebody generally doesn't like you or isn't interested in you, no, well then don't watch you or don't. I, I, I will have say opinion. this. Ryan puts himself out there, and it used to be the age old. If you put yourself out there, said so I used to think that too. I put myself out there, and I said to you before we started this journey, I says, look, Sean, you come along, you put stuff on social media. Prepare for what comes because we're all grown men. We all know that when you put your head up above the trench, you want to take a shot. But there was a time, Ogie, you just said to me here, clutch our kid. Come on, you're putting too much stuff on that social media. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I've got, and that's what's, what's, but now. <laughs> I said to my master one day, I was looking back through him, puke a dung. But I, 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 I but I know, see, see now, seeing him doing, he does. I just say, fucking fair pity. Oh, but why, I, but you know, I, I say, like, f- it, keep, now, keep her. Now, like, now, now there, there's, there's, there's that balance for a simple reason, what I would say is, what I said to you one time, I said to you, lad, come on. Uh, for the reason is, and I I have come to the line, and I always had to find the balance of where can you keep it business orientated and not personal orientated. Because social media consume you, boys. You, and, and you get into that rat race of trying to please people or trying to think, it, it, it will, it'll take over but and you'll start to watching. Be, to prefer, and I've seen, seen your, your podcast coming up saying, oh, PTs are fucktarts, right? It, the it, old, the, the, old the old me, the yo, you'll always have that person in there. You have to try and they, they clo- keep, they're going to you're going to that person's going to be there, but you have to keep them. I was going, fucking what are you slabbering about? So the next thing, I don't listen to it. I had a, I agreed with you, but you weren't you weren't you weren't you weren't, you weren't singling anybody out, oh. and anybody that felt you were, then they're doing what you were saying. They were you were you were saying was being done. But some so, of so like that there was a joking thing because to be fair. Like a lot of the guys I know, a lot of friends I have are PTs, and there's not it's, that was just like a a, a brush conversation. For they're not they're group. not PTs. They're but, coaches, coaches, <laughs> but, <laughs> coaches. But well, then look at it this way. Like as I say, is, I was saying, don't be commenting on on business if you're not business educated. Don't be commenting on mental health if you're not trained yeah. in mental health. So what I was driving home was, if anyone had a problem, with it, I'd be like, lads. They are separate, complete industries, and some are very good at it. There's some well-known guys around the world, very, very clever, where we move into different areas. But what I was saying is, they were throwing that out there. But moving back to my point, I used to think, oh, if you put yourself there, you should take it. But why should you? Why should you, if you choose to promote your business online, why should you take the shit? Because the amount of people that say things, you know, I I seen there, one time somebody sent me a WhatsApp video, some hackies making a video, saying all sorts of things, right? And the things he was accusing him of, I looked at the video and I was like, he, he he looks like he's doing that, 
But I didn't know this person. And what I found so, so strange about it, so this went round wildfire, wild quick, by from Derry that followed the pace, sent it to me. This went round and round and round. Next thing I was like, if I was standing down in the shop getting a tea and that person walked in, I'd go, well, how's it going? Talk talk to that person. Yeah. But this person had formed an opinion, decided to start circulating it to people, started, like, had some level of hate or, or uh, I would say jealousy. I'm going to say jealousy. Yeah, because the underdriving thing that goes on with people like that, there's there's two things. They're maybe not jealous of you or who you are, but the life or the the circumstances that you have, nothing, nothing is given to anyone. But but people but, might be but, in but a bad place. I, I I would admit when I was younger, I had a jealousy in me, but you have to learn how to control that. You know, and seeing you can control that there, it, if you can control that, things will start happening better for you. And I was listening to Brian's podcast. You know, last week a bit. If you think it, and you know, yeah. you, you can, you feel it, and things up. That's debatable with things. Um, but um, if you're a jealous person and you keep, you keep, you know, firing at them signals, you're you're going nowhere. Like, well, let me know. ask you this: When you were doing that all, and I know you might say that you don't, and you don't enjoy it, but to me, looking back, you were looking. People to like you, or looking, oh, you're yeah, looking yeah. vindication oh, from oh, people. You yeah, wanted yeah, to know yeah, that they yeah, liked you, yeah, and, and yeah, if you were getting the likes and you were getting the interaction, they yes. were liking you, and that yeah. was making you feel better about who you. I were. wanted to be. I wanted to be the. I see if I when I open a gym, see if somebody else opened a gym, I get annoyed. Do you see if somebody built a gym on the roof of my gym now? I wouldn't care. You know, yeah, I, I wanted the, the attention. There's things going on in my life, you know, around that period of time, you know. Came out of prison. I didn't know if it was coming well, or going. Let's go back. So, what age were you when you went to prison? I was my first stint. You no, know, I was in on remand. I was twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. And How long uh, were you on remand for? I was remand for a week, and uh, my couple of like a twenty one years of age is very young. A couple of things that really stand out. Uh, first thing was when. I mind going on a video link and I says to my father, I says, Daddy, I want to go home. I just want to child. Like. And he says, son, I've done many a thing for you. And he says, I can do nothing for you now. He says, you have to sit tight. And then I mind, I was up for video link again and I remember being in the cell and there's a fella below me and he says to me, he was from Warren Point. I don't even think I've ever heard of Warren Point in my life before. No, I did. I'm telling you a lie because we did play Warren Point in a school match. And he says to me, if I don't get bail in the morning, he says, I'm I'm cutting my wrist. And I says, no, nah, no problem. It's my cub. Next thing, Ryan Quinn video link. I bounces down into the bed, down the stairs, got the got the, the bail, and I come back up. You know, you have to come back up before you're, you're released out. And that boy cut his wrist. Like. And that was, I was 21 years of age. You kill himself? I don't know. I never heard of it. He was been taken out. Like. He done it. Like. So... That is twenty one years of age, and then I was I was released in base. So then, obviously, moving on, you were back in. Yeah. So uh, it was two what, and a half. What age? Two right. and a half years later. So right. it was about twenty three. Right. Okay. Twenty three. So that was two thousand five. So done two thousand five, two thousand six, two thousand seven, and just the tail end of two thousand and seven. Stroke started. I got. I got How released. long were you in prison at all? Two years. Th- two, three years. I know. I was went in two thousand five. Right. Done a bit of it. Oh yeah, okay. Two thousand and six, the full of it, yeah. and the right. nearly the most of two thousand and seven. Okay, um, and what what was that? Like? It was like uh, going to school, right? And you absolutely hated it, but it was um, a school for men, fighting over Weetabix, fighting over bacon, fighting over the TV in the games room, fighting over pool table, fighting over everything. And if you weren't fit to stand up for yourself, you were, you were going nowhere. Like. And did you have any altercations in there? <sighs> yeah, I'm not really. Did you know anyone? No. They just who so you went in. Nobody know. I just a young, young boy, mad from our bow, big voice on me, mad about football, mad about getting stuck in and indoor soccer, just as if I was, I was a school. You know, I didn't. Don't know. I just, I don't. Know. At the start when I when I was there was a fear in me like. But just when you're in there, you just start to get used to it. And we up up to the gym, 
and played in their soccer with the West Belfast boys, East Belfast boys. I was driving shoulders into them. So what what prison were you? I was in McGabry for about six months, and then I was in McGilligan for about was McGilligan eighteen six. I left what I left me eight, uh, 18 months. I'd done sixteen months in McGilligan, and then I'd done two months in the Crumlin Road. Your day to day, how do you see that? And so the, the you you told me then that's where you, you done your PT. I that okay. That's I, where you got into fitness. I suppose um, when do you need a hobby? Do you need something? Did you need something? In I, I got I I, I came, when I went in the first thing I said to them was I says I want the job in the gym, and they looked at me and says no you're not getting it, and I says no problem. But they put me in they put me in a, they put me in a job at reception. And they says to me, right, you're going to get out all day. This is a great job. We're going to give you this job. And I says, no problem. That's great. I'm going about all day. I don't have to be locked up. So they says, can you cook? I says, can I? I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't make toast. Burn water. Not a clue. I had not clue. No. I honestly hadn't a clue. Like, So I says, I. So there was another fellow with me and he was helping me. So he showed me how to. Cook. So I was making their sausages and their bacon, their eggs and their bread. They're, let's call them screws or prison yards, whatever you want to call them. But I got all of them all right. Like, so, and I was allowed to eat the food and all, like, so I was working there for, I was in the right way, like, but I kept getting people shouting to me, root, root. And I was saying, what the fuck is it, root? Like, what's your problem? What are you calling, what's? So then there was someone from Cookstown that was in prison at the same time and sent word over for me to go to Mass. So I goes over to Mass and Madam, he says, get out of that uh, job. Pronto and get out of that wing. So I was in the I was in the protection wing with all the other Thought you were a ball root. Thought root thought they called me a root. I hadn't a clue and I was so walking. For like, anyone that's not aware, it's a slang term for a pedophile. Sex offender. Oh, so I was getting called that and I hadn't a clue. And me looking at boys and like I'm telling you, like I seen the top guys, like the top I, there's three boys in particular shouting it at me. And if I named them now to you, you know them. You know, so like they were Hardened criminals, like, and they're shouting at me, you fucking root you, what are you doing? And I was going, what are you on about? I hadn't a fucking notion what a root was. So, that had I, been a sobering conversation. Oh, but then, when, when, I, when I caught myself on, I says, right guys, I, I'm getting out of here. And, um, are you allowed to name names on here, are you? Name away. Are you? Name away. I remember. And just for anybody that has any problems, what, send us an email to we don't care. Mm-hmm. Add, add our pocket. I remember... I just, these are not see stories like I was standing in the in this production wing and there's this young boy in it and he's about 25 and he would map the lantern and this other boy with glasses he's a wee old man who I thought I seen before and I says he says to me he gripped the map and he went and got there he says I'll oh, fucking he says, I'll kill him and I says what's wrong he says walking over the floor so I asked him his name he says my name's Trevor I says what are you in for he says, oh, blah, blah, blah. So the next thing... What's blah, blah, blah? I, don't, but it's, I like details. I know, but I can't. It's just, it's, it's, it could bring up just to be okay. a wee bit right, go ahead. for the family. So I says, that was all right. And then I knew the other boy. I, said, I didn't know him, but I knew him. But he started showing me how to play the guitar. So I learned how to play the guitar. We can play it all right. Like, wouldn't be great at it. But I tied it over lockdown. It was not bum note. Seen some of my videos. No, so, you're not great anyway, I goes down to... I was shifted down to McGilligan, and I lifts the paper, opens the paper, there it is. The longest ever sentence to be given to the prisoner in Northern Ireland, a fella Trevor Hamilton, right? If he's go off here and if he's listening to looking him up, this boy was in with me, right? And I was like 23 years of age. The other fella that I said I knew, I knew him to see, I couldn't put a name on him. But I remember my father, he does uh, vehicle conversions for like taxis, disabled people and stuff like that. I keep forgetting that. I need to look at the handsome, the handsome. What do you call handsome him? Handsome stranger. I keep looking at you. <laughs> I keep forgetting about this man here. Well, so when you're I'm telling stories I'm about these bullers. Right? You can look at John all you want. <laughs> <laughs> so that is all right. I not day opens the paper and I sees this boy's name, and I says "fuck" and the address, and I goes "holy fuck." I was in this man's house. Me and my brother, my father sent us into the housing estate in. Belfast, right? And he says, boys, there's one way in, one way out. And you do, they do not want to know your religion. So get you in there, get that van out, 
we'll get our converted, get our back in, and away and get paid for it in a way. So we we went to this house, and the 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 woman was in a wheelchair, and she could only move her fucking chin, right? Now this is where you, this is this is fucking prison, like you don't give a fuck about you, right? So the woman was moving her, and it's a nice wee house, and there's this wee man looking after. Her. So the next thing, I reads the paper, the name, knew it, the address, got us away. Your man was a pedophile, and I, I don't want to say what he done. But I was in this fucking house. And I, you would have swore, you would have swore he was a fucking gentleman. And his wife was in a wheelchair and just could move her chin. And I was fucking locked up with these boys. You know? How, how did you end up with a protection wing with fucking... Because I was, I was working in reception. That's what they keep you at. Fuck right. So I had... So no wonder... Straight in, you're so getting a handy job. Aye, and you're and getting a job out all day, and they're giving you sausages and bacon. Sir, you thought you were, you, you thought you were. You look like a bit of a receptionist there, you, see? You thought you're an Aldi camp, you know. Aye, Aye, but then I, I caught myself on, like whenever these boys, but never, I never wouldn't, didn't have a clue because these boys that you're in were never going to tell you. Mm-hmm. They just wanted you there. They wanted you there to entertain them, talk to them, you know. And uh, no, this, that's. 23 years of age, like us, I was going through that. So then you can move off that wing then? I can move off that ring, wing and then up into, oh fuck, up into the to the ghetto, up into the real rough. Like it, we were kept in, in real nice cells, real nice, all new buildings and all. Oh, I just took up into the ghetto, I think it was Iron, no, it wasn't Iron House, I can't mind, what, Row or something like that. No, Row, no, I can't mind, it wasn't Row. No, I, can't, I just can't mind the name of it, but fuck, I was uh, locked up this boy, right? And he so got let up, me get this straight. Fucking pedos and all are down in the fucking oh, nicest I, of nice. Aye, and we, the, the, well, look, then this boy's in, 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 has, has done worse. Right. Than, done as, this, this boy's deserved to be in there for other crimes as well, but up in there, fuck it, it was rough, aye. And all I could hear, Buffalo Soldier. So all the, the, the travellers and all there, they loved that music, like, you know, and, um, they had all that there playing, and the other man was fucking high as a kite, smoking pot, and I didn't even know what a drug looked like. I was anti-drugs before I entered prison, like, anti. Anti-drugs. Pro, are, are you pro-drugs now? Anti, no, no. <laughs> anti-drugs, anti-steroids. I was just, you know, I was all against all that stuff, like. And uh, up in the up into the, uh, the this wing, and I was put into this boy, and every morning he got up, he got up every morning half five, right? Half five. He went to the sink, and he started brushing his teeth. And he was choking himself. I went with a toothbrush. I, you never, and he, you think he was going to book every time. He's, this is every morning, brushing his teeth, and he'd put his head back and he'd make a gurgling noise. It's half five, six o'clock in the morning. And like the door doesn't open at eight o'clock. And just TV on, rolling up cigarettes, smoking them. And I was sitting there, <laughs> just mouth zipped, never opened Joints? I have joints. Where are they getting them from? Well, it's all smuggled in, like mobile phones. Oh, the whole thing's in. And back then, a mobile phone, Jesus Christ! It's not like <laughs> the Nokia thirty three ten. No, I did not want to know uh, where that thing had been smuggled. Uh, no, there's there's wee phones like you were getting them, wee flip phone stuff oh, like right. they were getting them in. Like, boys could have got them in. I say there was the different ways of getting them in. Like they were putting them up their their butts and they're sticking them underneath their their bowls and things they got. Just to me, to me, it's a big search you got. Like if you were trusted, or how big your balls were. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like you know. I, where does the charger go? No, I, t- this is how the charger's done. Right. Let me hear this. So, they cut the lead. Cut the lead. Right. right? And you bring in the bit that sticks into the phone. Right? Pardon me. And what you do is, you get four batteries. So, plus minus this way, plus minus that way. You rolled it up in paper, and you wrote it like a set of binoculars. You got it tight, and you put tape around it. Right? You got the, you know the nail clippers? You took it apart, and that give you the you put it at the bottom terminal, terminal, and then you stick it. You put the tape over the top of it, right? And then you went to the top. You split the charger, and you put the, the live and the what is it? So they're just like negative a parallel circuit. Uh, so you put it like that, and then you wrap cellar tape around it. Bang, phone charge. Where you land? That's where. But you didn't need a fucking office out of batteries. You? You, no, but no, you, could, but they're I, I rechargeable. Mean, they're recharge. You get rechargeable batteries. Like. Oh, oh, you're right, rechargeable batteries. Because like. If you were like McGabry's snake champion, <laughs> <laughs> you, need a, you need a lot the of phone, the phones only come out when the when when the when the screws went, went but away. We're, we're we're making light of it, but right. So that was there. 
was you're up in the ghetto. Was that was that in Magabra or something? That's Ma, that was Magabra. So then I I some kept on people so kept. So Magabra is the other side of the lock. So it was handy. What what what, what was the reason in going up to Miguel? Was uh, that a choice or was uh, that the 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 few of the boys in there kept telling me says if you go up to Magilligan, there's a place called Spurn and there's a place called Foilview. So Magilligan's like hates blocks, same as the maze. Yeah. And then you go down, you spend a period of time there, and then you go down into Spurn, and it's like dorms. Right. And it's like eight prisoners in one dorm, bunk beds. And then once you spend a bit of time there, but you have to behave yourself like, then you're sent out to foil view. So you're going from category A to category C to category D. No, no, I don't see. I think Spurn's still C. And then you're out in the category D. Which is open. It's an open. It's like a big mobile with single rooms in it. So you could put in the transfer, basically the... You had to make up. Out, you had to make it quicker, so you could if you behave yourself. No, you well, you had a reason. I had a reason. I oh. says my family couldn't visit me in McGabry. I was sure it was handy for the rest of me in McGabry, and it wasn't. Oh, that's what, but that's what it was getting at. Aye. That it was closer to the thing. But a lot, I, I follow a lot of different crime podcasts, and a lot of them trade out. They can they can uh, request time in different prisons, and if you behave yourself through the pattern, you eventually get more more privileges. Yeah. So you moved up to McGilligan and. Uh, Oh, it was it. Uh, see, when I was put into those them, because uh, that's that them H blocks. We in the we ever in the crumb yet? We ever do the yeah. tour? Oh, yeah, see yeah. them big black floors and all. Yeah. See that? Aye, that's that that's old, it. That, that, that English style prison. That that's that yeah. where the one 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 central. So column I I, I kind of went to like a nice kind of prison, and I went down there, and I goes, "What the fuck did I come down here for?" As I'm like OCD, and it's big black floors, and the dim lights. The room was like a cave, or the, the cell was like a proper, it's some age, like, big pipes running through it, oh, there was some old desks, old cupboards, it was fucking, um, uh, KTS, wrote in the wall, killed the screws, uh, my own mill, C, uh, number 8, 209, 1993, wrote all over, yes, it's like, what the fuck have I come into, and that actually, that, I just said, it, it, it hit me like, and I said, what have I done here? Like, I had a cosy wee thing up there, should have stayed up there, and then I come down. So when I got down there, that f- I did it again. I says, says, would you like a job down here? Would you like to go to education? Or what would you like to do? I says, I'd like to work in the gym. No, you're not working in the gym. I says, that's all right. Wait, what, was it a coveted job? Because it's a job, but you, you have to be thrusted. Right. You must, it's just, you're you're up and down. Because I read I, I, I could, I could, like, you could come in from one wing and give me something, see, right, give that to one. Yes. I, when I he re- comes in in our time, you yes, know. Yes. I read somewhere that the most confrontations and injuries, well, attacks, happen through the recreation, through the gym and out in the yard. So whoever got them duties, that had to be time in. But you, you eventually, you, did you? Well, I... I was going into the gym and, and, and I suppose them boys seen me, this young enthusiastic lad that he was, I was playing soccer, I was, I was lifting weights, I was just, I was at anything, anything was sporty, I, I was at it like, and they just called me up one day and says to me, uh, I can remember him, he's a radius of a, 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 a screw, he was a, I can't forget, the prison officer, was, I liked him, he he had a bit of a stammer and he says to me, I need to talk to you and brought me. He says, do you want this? Do you still want this job in the gym? I says, I do, surely. He says, right. He says, you start on Monday. So he brought me in and I, th- I was in with this real, real nice lad. Real nice lad. And he had 12 years and he locked somebody inside something. Like he'd done this crazy, crazy thing. Like, But he was so, like, we wouldn't, we couldn't believe it, what, he, what he'd done. Like. But... He was coming to, towards the end of his, his sentence, like so. I was twelve years of some buying. Uh, I done six, like. There's a lot, there, there must be somebody out there that doesn't think he's as nice as a guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. But still, it was just it was so weird, like you know, just meeting these people that done these hor- horrible things, like and sat out to do it and meant to do it, and like I was in, I, I was taking his job, so he was showing me what to do. So um, that is it. I got, I got the job and started to work in, in, in the gym. And were, were the, any of the gyms paramilitary controlled, or was that not as much now? Uh, McGabry, there's there's the, the parma, there's parma the separate, but the separate like so they'll yeah. get their gym at such a time in the hour so they'll get their gym at such a time so yeah that's and then they've got their own soccer outdoor three D pitches and all going back from then I actually was back in there but and like two or three months ago doing a doing a I talked to prisoners on the way out like so they bring me in I'm actually going to Dublin next Wednesday to do a talk I don't, it's not in a prison it's a similar kind of thing like so I was back in it hasn't changed one bit like still the same so. Uh, 
But McGilligan, there's really if you if you're a loyalist or a public and you're and you you're you're staunch, you, you stay. You lot go to McGilligan. Yeah. So some of them do drop off and want to go down and get the easier ride down McGilligan. So you will get them. You will get some some power military prisoners down there. Like they they were there. Like mm-hmm. what about gear in the gym? Oh, loads of it. Because loads. There's men coming out of them prisons. Loads. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I took it. Hundred percent. Yeah, took it. Oh, I, I didn't. I, I seen you when you came out. I didn't. Uh, no, I didn't. No. I wouldn't inject myself or anything like that. Like, but this is like I never took no harder drugs than that. You know, like there was there was plenty of. Cocaine, there was ecstasy, there was all that. It's mind blowing to believe that in a prison, that uh, it, like I, I would watch. I seen that. Like I seen, t- I seen t- tons of beer. No, like did I? Did I seen tons of beer? Seen boys making hooch. I guess it's oh, yeah, hooch, oh, prison, hooch. Used to blow up. They used to put it on the top of the. They heat it or something. That heated on the on the big next thing. You know, and some boy come out and him scalded. Just blew up in the <laughs> in the cell. I, but to be honest, I, I'm just picturing you putting together that charger and I think there's no way that bollocks done that in his own. Somebody else showed him that. <laughs> but so the, uh, I, but there is, so like obviously you see a lot of guys to go in and, and there's so many of them said the therapy that they received was training. That they seen their time in and they get fucking hanged because they, they just, they become fixated with, there's nothing else you can do. You can just work on yourself. I actually remember recently listening to Stanley Simpson or someone talking to Crime One, they're saying that that's that's their, you know, there's no gym in that. They, mm. they, you know, they don't know what they're doing. So how long were you working in the gym? I was in the gym for what was that? Was that? This is a story. I ended up backing it. So I done my my stint in the gym. I, I can't honestly. I can't really. Rem- it's sad long ago now. If you'd asked me this three years ago, four years ago, like we could have told you, but I done a good six, seven, eight months in it, and then. I was in my I was in took out of the the blocks brought down to Spurn so I was in there, um, Spurn Spurn's rough like it, it's it's it, you're saying like you're talking about confrontations like I had a few when I was in in it like and and you know Spurn was like eight men in one dorm right I get over to Foilview right and there's thirteen as of us in this uh, big long um, we went from eight beds it eight, eight, or one, two, three, four, four bunk beds, uh, f- uh, eight of us in the room, uh, to then, you got your own room, you're allowed to bring in your own bed, and your own court, and so that was nuts, like, all the things you're allowed to do, but you're still in a wee tiny, some of the rooms are fucking, they're, they're, they're rough, like, the water coming through the window, stuff like that, and then there's brand new, and it was like, please put me in, to get, once he gets out, he's getting out in six weeks time, can I get his room, but uh, we were all in the one dorm, so they close it. They open the doors in the morning at o'clock, and you can do whatever you want, wherever you have to go, whatever you're doing. And then they close them at eight o'clock at night. But I used to get out. I used to go to Bernardo's, and I, I used to go to. I think I told this before in the podcast. I used to get out. This bus, this big big maroon bus that I transit van drives into Lima Valley, and all these people shopping out gets me. I'm a joke of voice with a plastic bag that you can see through, right, with a pint of milk. <laughs> An orange or an apple, a packet of crisps, and a and a a sandwich, and I had a walk down. Mind, the, I had a walk down the street. Trip. Trip. No, right. walk down. But they knew going to park an oar. Oh, I. everybody was looking and they knew it was me where I was coming from and where I was going. So I used to get into Bernardo's and up the stairs, and uh, I done all like sorting the clothes and stuff. You haven't seen some of the stuff come in there, like all like real designer stuff and all coming. The people were just buying and bringing in, like so. I was I was doing that and then I come back. This evening I come back and I was oh you talk about you talk about being gutted. Uh, when do you hear this? I come back and uh, next thing right, uh, I think we were don't know whatever it was Turpin say eight is going into lockdown, locked her down right boys. There's all these phones, all this needles and again I, honestly and I'll tell you here now because it's way, none of it was mine. It was found in the toilets under the floor. So nobody owned up this. So every one of us, the thirteen of us, is in the in the uh, the dorm, whatever you call it, or buying up to the is it the S S U or it is I like it solid con- solitary confinement. So we are all put into sales, right? Took out one by one, brought in on this table, and the governor at the top of the table, and you had to plead your case. And I said they weren't mine. He says, "Oh, you know who owns them?" I says, "I don't." Then they were looking at me to squeal like. I kind of didn't know who owned them, but I just didn't. Know. I said, I don't. I get three, three, three days in solitary confinement. 
I got out for 15 minutes in the morning to go to the shower and go to the toilet. And I was in a room. There was no light in it. A mattress, my blanket, my, my pillow, a piss pot in the corner and a Bible. And I couldn't even turn the light on. I got out in the evening time to go to, for an hour. I got 30 minutes every day. 15 in the morning, 15 in the evening for three days. And it was the worst three days of my life that I'll never forget. But so you're guilty so then by I, association. I, so then I was uh, fired then back up into the... Whole thing. Whole back thing. Oh, then after that, after the three days, on back up into the into the into the, I had back up into the jail into the wings for eight weeks. I had eight good reports to get me back down. Then into it was eight good reports. Yet you go you go from basic no TV till standard. You get your TV and you get an extra lock of quid a week, and then I went enhanced, and that means you get an extra visit or and an extra gym session a week, and then you can apply for foil view. And I got back in like so. That, but then I had a. Had to start ba- back over again, and then uh, how long did you have them before you were out? So I got, they, they took me back into the gym again. You see, so that's how yeah. I went back then. But I, I was, I was about a week away from getting town visits. So town visits, that's, that's my first time. So the first time I got out through the gate was about twenty two months. I twenty two months done. I should have been getting out at twenty. So at twenty two months, I applied for no. I'm telling you a lie. 20, 20 months, I applied for a um, town visit, right? And my mum come up. And was Limavati, was that the Limavati? Limavati, yeah. Right, okay. So my mum come up uh, to visit me, and I can't mind who else was there that day. And it was a great visit. It was the last time my mum, she hardly ever come up. She it broke her heart, like. And she come up to see me, because she knew that was it. She says, that's it. She says, no more of this, you know, going to see him in, 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 a, in, in that place. And... They were taking, like, you brought a kid with you, they took the nappy off it, they were doing all these fucking things, you know. And I went in that day and I was just so, I was excited. And I says, right, this time next week or whatever, and, um, I, I'll be getting lifted outside the gate and took the limb of body. I went into into the, uh, I went into this, into my, down into my room, and I says, right, I always give mummy an hour and our daddy or whoever, whoever was visiting me an hour or so, an hour and a half to get home. And then I go to the payphone and ring. So I rings home and our Kevin answers the phone. And I says, well, what's the crack? He says, uh, did you hear? And I says, hear what? He says, oh, Callum hung himself. And I says, what? This is my uncle. I mean, him as a guy. On says, your mother's side? Aye. Uh, um, so mummy went up the road that day and then he... So you know, that's one, one of your mother's... Brothers. Was I was shot 30. and then the other... I see one, one shot and then he hung himself. It's a hard run. So he, um, he hung himself 37 years of age. And I, he sent me a... They call him a stammer, and, but he could sing. You want to hear him playing a guitar? Unbelievable, but he was not, you know. But he was he, like he was just he was one of he was one of a kind, and he decided to he hung himself that morning, and um, then I didn't get out. They wouldn't let me out for the funeral, you know. Um, I tried to get out. They wouldn't let me out, and then the following week I was getting on my town visit, and then bang, I was in the Sunday World. So the Sunday World done a big article on me. Look, it was low lies. Like I said, it was like it was. Selling steroids in jail and I was doing that. It was a load, of, that. a load of nonsense, like you know. And that stopped my town visit. Like so, I had to wait about another three or four weeks before I got one. That all had to be cleared up and stuff like that. And got cleared up, and then I finally got out and and I was out on a on a town visit. And um, that's when I started to to get out. What was it like then when you got out? What was it like when you 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 were? Well, I come out. Uh, I was very fortunate that I had a good family, a good father. Um, and it was the recession. They're talking about the recession now. The recession was then. It was two thousand and seven, two thousand eight. The late end of it. So money wasn't wasn't was tight at that time because the whole. I don't know if you remembered or not. Maybe you're a bit younger than me. Like, no, but I don't remember. The recession was on, so I come out with whatever I had in brown, the brown bags. There's no point in telling you. I walked out, whatever I had in the brown bags, and. Um, I remember my friends taking me, I don't want or nothing like, and my friends took me, I remember big stuff, um, he took me to the, took me to Viscounts, brought me dinner and all, and uh, that's one of my, 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 my first memories, like, but I just was very, I don't know, I was, well, I'd, I'd put on a bit of size, so I was, I was taking a few tablets and everything in there, with a couple of boys gave me, you know. Old the animal. No, it wasn't. Was it uh, the oxies or something like that? I can't I mean. Anybody that's listening here, do not, do not. If you're a young 
Jay, listen to this here. Any young boy in your teens or your 20s, stay away from that stuff. I come out and was, I was about 15, 15 and a half stone, like. But, like, I was I was eating as well, like, and I was training, and I was maybe eating a loaf of bread a day, and past all stupid stuff, like, there was no calorie counting, there was no protein intake, it was just whatever I could hammer down me, like. And then, because I was a bit younger, I didn't put on a big pile of body fat, but I was, I put on a lot of size, like. But tell me, you were obviously, you were in the gym, mm-hmm. in the, whenever you were in, you know, but... When did you think I'm going to open up my own gym? Like, where did that even start? Or did um, you think about it while you were in because you I, enjoyed it? That's where the first gym, the first time I ever in the gym was was a sixteen Mickey Coleman. We were actually talking about him earlier on, in a nice way, Mickey. But he took me up to Clano Gym. So that was my first taste of a gym. And I used to get, and I used to get the twenty five kg dumbbells, pump them up above my head, and thought, oh Jesus, that boy, that, that cub strong. Next thing, got up on the Tuesday night and then do it again, and I couldn't do it. But then I hadn't got it in my head. Like I'd burnt my shoulders out the night before. So that was my first uh, taste of the gym. Then I know uh, Paul Quinn, PJ Quinn's father, PJ that played for Tyrone. And actually, PJ said a couple of weeks to me, he says to me, uh, he says, 10 years ago, he says, uh, they were sending for you. He says, they thought you weren't wise. He says, looking at the phone, he says, and talking at it. And he says, now if you don't talk into the phone, he says, they're going to send for you. He says, because that's what you should be doing. So uh, his father opened the Moortown gym and I was in it. And he had a good wee system going, wee fob system and all. And I started to pick that up. And I, I always wanted to to be in the fitness industry or a PE teacher. And I was never going to be a PE teacher because I couldn't, I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't settle down. I wouldn't study. But then I went into, into jail. And when I was in jail, I did say to myself, and I got I done my PT cert and all that stuff there. I says, I'm going to open a gym when I come out of here. How I was going to do it, I don't know. I, I winged it. There's no point in that. I did wing it like... Now, when I come out, I says to my father, I says, I'm going to open a gym. And he says to me, son, he says, you're on your own. He says, there is a session. And he says, there's no money in lifting watts. He called, said, wait, he called them watts. You ever hear the old boys there set up a, a bomb, a bum? There's a bum, there's a bum in, in Cookstown instead of a, a bomb. So he says, there's no money in lifting watts. So I got the money to get somehow um, and... I got, I got, I, that's that, that's how it, how it, there's a long story to the, how, how I done it as well, and about going to China, and everybody was laughing at me, always buying all the scrap out of China, and blah, 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 but the scrap worked. But like, were you one of the first ones to open up like a, a gym as such? I mean, back, it used to be. Because that's what above. you were saying, no? Aye, because I was like, when, when did you actually stream? Ferguson, 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 Ferguson was the first above, gym, above, above Super Value. Aye, it was the first ever, ever kind of. Uh, famous gym and then Corny at his as well. Like, we, but Corny we was Cornies. Corny was more a home. Gym. He's he wasn't was hardcore. Really a, he wasn't a public gym. Like he wasn't like taking. He was just come on in, out the back here and tell me he couldn't train away. But you trends know? have changed too. Because I said this now. How many years ago did you open the gym? Twelve years. It's officially open in twelve years next week. Like twelve years ago, we'd have been standing at Corny's. There wasn't a woman in a gym. Yeah, at all. Because we just, we were saying. And that. then now, like, uh-huh. what what would you be getting? Would you get 50-50? Or uh, would you get more females? Well, I was in the gym last night, and it was was more women on the last night than it was men. Well, th- this is an art thing I've seen in a trend that's changed in the years, and this is in a short period of time, and we were discussing this one time. Fifteen years ago, it was only a couple, dark panel, we, we started looking with, we went to Corny's. So that was all right, and that was hardcore. There wasn't a woman to be seen, and then all of a sudden, the leisure centre opened their gym, and and this is uh, people say, oh, I just I'm speaking generally. Women started using the cross trainer and the bikes. They wanted to be toned. They wanted a toned stomach. That was the initial goal. Then things started changing, and the Kardashians come along. They wanted big asses, so they started squatting. You know, they're all about the legs and the squat. There's nothing else was being done. They wouldn't work up her body. Didn't want to look. Now. They're cross. They're, they're animals. They're training. They're pumped. They're looking shoulder pump. They're yeah. looking arm pumps. Like it, it, it's it's changed. We'll probably we'll, we'll, we'll go more into that and ask you more on your opinion on some of that there because I had an opinion on that. And we, I'll give you it, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. But well, we're here now, and we're discussing that now. Like it it it's changed. But Sean says to me, he says, coming out the road, and he says. Was that the first mainstream gym that was open public that was that was aimed at that commercial side that that you know you had the the 
eat an area and you had the drinks and you had this fridge and you had yeah. you know make and then like there was like a ladies' night and there was like I would I would have had it I'd have closed the gym at eight o'clock on a Tuesday and Thursday between eight and ten and then there was only ladies allowed in so I like I, I was trying to get you know in times taste ladies to come in and use the gym and don't be afraid like I have three I have three or four messages on my phone today like people women sending me messages me and the husband's going to start we're very nervous you know so like it's still. I saw an inter- uh, there was a, a an art, I don't know if you ever seen the clip and your mom was talking he's a big he's a, a he's a, a he's a well known bodybuilder in the in the Vietnam scene or whatever it was right but he was talking about a woman that came in and she was in a wheelchair and he says she was obvious she had never been in before she'd never been about she was there she was with her two kilo dumbbells and she was trying and he says I was just I couldn't help but keep looking at her. I couldn't help but just fixate on her and think to myself. And he says, she was on the way out and I just finished my sat and went over to her and I says, you know, you're inspiring. He says, people coming in and doing things they're good at isn't inspiring. People coming in conquering their fear, doing things they're bad at is, is guts. Like she had more courage to be in there doing that than the ones that can do it. But... So that was your mainstream was the diverse. You've come out. You've now opened your thing. Where's Where's your head at? Where are you at? So you you've served your time. Yeah. Your debt's paid back to society. Yeah. Did you feel that? No. Were you ready to say I'm out? I'm free. I'm free. No, I didn't know where I was. Because I did, honestly, I've known you through years, and there were some states it was just it seemed like chaos. It was running. You would run. You're a compulsive person. We could say that. Yeah, I I've seen your gym. Like you're you are the definition of OCD. That is the cleanest. It has to be the cleanest gym in the country. So you've now gone full by. Open the gym. Yeah. Social media is on the go. Yeah. And as much as we slate social media, this doesn't work. My business and the competitions doesn't work. You didn't build that gym. In the Loch Shore, in the middle of a small country village, but not many members in. If you weren't on social media, no, it wouldn't wouldn't happen. It wouldn't worked. It's got a two edged sword. Yeah, but where was your head then? Where are you at? You know, <sighs> to be honest with you, I was winging it. I was winging it. Like there's no. Did I know winning about um, how to lift weights? Right? No. Did I know how to nutrition? Not a clue. I was winging it, completely winging it. And thinking, I wasn't winging it, but I was winging it. You know, I was sitting with the best of the best, like your Phil Grahams and all these guys, and I was winging it, and it was working. I don't know how, but it was working. And I wasn't trying to... Now, when I look back now, I, was, I didn't think I was winging it, but I winged it, and it, 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 it worked like... And I wasn't trying to... There's now saying, um, one of your old jokes, I was listening to them, is the, the saying, you know, is the ball in the field and the board flies up onto the back and he says to the ball I'd love to be fit to fly up onto them branches like I did way back when I was younger and the ball says to him he says just you fly down there he says and eat a wee bit of my shit he says you'll be not the first branch he says tomorrow he says are you serious he says yeah he down he had a bit of the ball's shit flew up onto the, the branch the next day and he says to the Bold, you see me? He says, ah, he says, look, have a wee bit more. He says, you'll get to the top again. Boards down, eats the, the shit. Next day, he's at the fucking top. Next thing, bang, bang. Farmer shoots him. Board hits the ground. That's what happens <laughs> when there's bullshit about it. <laughs> you're always going to be taken down. Like. So you can only, bull- you can only sell the rest of own and you guys were hitting with the the, the PTs like you're gonna bu- sell bullshit once. It's well, gonna I, smell I, like. I'm gonna put this to you now. I have you on my opportunity to take shot. I think if you're in the industry long enough, you'll contradict yourself fifty times. Yeah, because there's one time. Don't be doing so many weeks programs. That's bad for you. Next minute, there's a twelve week program. Yeah. Next minute, don't be doing that. And the th- I've always said this: the body hasn't evolved that much that the age old things work if they're done right. No matter yeah. what. A boy says to me, I was in, in a place today, I was, I was doing a bit of tire kicking, 
And he says to me, my friend, he says, is in the industry. And I says, yes, this is his name. Yes, I know him. I says, he's the next generation. I says, he's 10 years behind me. I says, I'm kind of, I've done what I've done. I don't need to do any, any more that it, it, it does his thing. And he says to me, ah, he says, he sells programs. He says, at two and a half thousand pounds. I says, Jesus, that's good. He says, some money. I says, I. I says, well, how long is that program for? He says, six months. I says, right, divide. I says, two and a half grand by six. He divided it. I says, right, divide that there by four. It's four weeks, right? I says, divide that by seven. I says, right, that's a day. And then I says, divide it by the air. I says, that man's getting 14 odd pound, I think it was, to be tortured every day by somebody on a phone. I says, that's what he's getting. I says, you need to break it down. These boys are telling you how much they're making and how much they're doing. But when you break it all down, you could have all these people on your phone torturing you. You know, oh, I'm not well today, or oh, what should I eat? And oh, Jesus, I don't like that. And it's tough, like it is tough. Like people think it's it's a it's a it's a rosy rosy a rosy game, like no bullshit, bullshit. They're sending that to fucking two hundred people, and only about thirty percent is going to message them back. Ah, and still, after after three, you still, you still, what is the repetition? What is it to to you repeat something twenty day, or seventeen twenty days something like that? It doesn't become a practice. Well, I, so I, you would I you know this and I know this that January the big boom and everyone's in the gym and, and like I do like to yo yo and be in and about the gym and, and then back out. But then people these mass programs and I have seen them and you've said some of the names of some of the people that have introduced some of them because it's a very very clever business idea and. I'll tell you now, creating a program that you can sell a thousand times in one email and click and send it now and sell it at a fraction of the price will earn you more money because you're breaking down how you can make more. If you work out over a period of time, and this will be mathematically studied, if you work out that 30% of them will stick at this, 10% will read the the thing and stick to it, so I'm going to have to deal with 20%. So when you're dividing them figures, multiply that by 20, and that's what he's going to have to do. Well, I I had a... I am. I did an American girl rung me one day. She rung. I didn't even on on Insta, or don't know, Instagram. She says to me, uh, "I heard you're the person to go to because I need to ask you a question." I says, "What?" It says, "I paid two thousand odd dollars to such and a person, and I don't think I'm getting what I've paid for." Right? And I says, "No problem." So she started going. I says, "Look, if you're not going to give me the name, I says I don't want to know." No, 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 I can't tell you. I says, listen to me, I'm not going to say anything. I says, send me the name, and then I'll answer your question. So she sent me the name. Who was I'm, it? I can't mind. <laughs> <laughs> we like details. So <laughs> I went through her program. It was a complete and utter disgrace. On Like, this girl was 14 and a half stone, and she was in 1,200 calories straight away. You know, and like... But right, but you, you hey... Um, there, okay, you, there is. I, I, I know what you're saying. I, there is a lot of hassle with this. See, if you try to go into this thing here, bullshit people, I'm telling you now, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Like, oh, I, so, and, and hey, I've no doubt. And it's not worth it because whenever you break it all down, you're going to get you're going to get destroyed by one person that's giving you fourteen odd pound a day, you know, to to ring you and torture you. So whenever you're going to do it, you do it right, you know. And as as you said there now, yes, I, I've done that. See that making a program of. I mean, we made up a female one and a, a soul like crazy like. It, 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 it's but some of these people, whenever you sell it to them, they think, "Oh, no, that's not enough. I want more. I want more." You know, oh, I I didn't. You know. Well, I'll I'll tell you another thing. I started back training, and I as I've said before, took on a PT. I know what I need to go and do. It's the kind of ability that I I'm after. Mm-hmm. I know what I need to go and do. You eat less, do more, unless uh, now that uh, now. You, it depends, what you're, depends what you're, depends what depends what you're. What your what your end goal is, whatever you're looking mm. thing. But if you're looking to shift a bit of weight, it doesn't get much more, and you can get more scientific, and you can get more. Yeah, but then, it, but if you do more and eat less, <laughs> ah, but right on there, you'll lose weight. Okay. But, what, right. but what you need is somebody pushing you. Right, on. Right, 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 right. So uh, that's the same as your <laughs> car. So if you if you put less fuel in it and drive more, you're going to get further. No, but but that's that's your car start breaking down. I love when people use the car analogy. Right, uh, but, you, but later on they'll say, "Oh, well, you need good fuel in your car, you need bad fuel in your car." The car analogy works to a certain degree, but right, if you're in a calorie deficit, you are doing more than the calories you're consuming to a level degree. Right. You will lose weight. Right? Let's, yes or no? No, you, you will. You're, you're answering the question for me. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, hold on, I don't know how to raffle cars, kid, and I don't know how to raffle anything. But I'll tell you this here now: I know how, to, how the body works. Right? Right. There's three components. Do you need protein? 
carbohydrates and essential fats. Now, not the fat in your body, right? And if you don't control them the way you should control them, you're going to start affecting the hormones in your body, right? So I heard you, uh, you boys were talking about the steak and the, and the no sex and all that stuff there. This affects everything. This affects your sex drive. It affects your mood. It affects your sleep. If you're not fe- if you, uh, fueling your body with the correct amount of these three macronutrients, all right? So one of them is protein. Protein, and I'm breaking it down to uh, layman terms to, to the client, right? Not scientific. I'm not going to get scientific, right? Protein is like the oil of the car, right? right? You always have to top it up, but it takes longer to break it down. So whenever you eat protein, if you take a high-protein diet, like you need to know how many grams you're going to consume, right? So say you were a 210 pound, right? I would have you in and around a bit. If you're looking to like maintain, not be too stuffed, bloated, 200, 190, 210 grams of protein per day, right? Sean, that's giving you a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Yeah. But I could give you a wee bit more if you wanted. If you want, at the, day, at the minute I'm hitting, I'm kicking away way over 200. Like, and it's tough to eat because I'm looking to put on a bit of size. So that's the first thing. And it does three things, right? As I tell people, in lemon terms, it repairs your muscle. And you could kind of say this is the same. It grows your muscle, right? But the number one thing it'll do, it'll curb your hunger because your body takes longer to break down protein. So if I give you two chicken fillets now, you'd struggle with the third one. If I give you two Kit Kats, you can maybe whack the third one into you and a cup of tea, right? Because your body's going to break down that Kit Kat a lot quicker. Carbohydrates are the same as the diesel or the petrol or the gas or whatever you're putting into your car, right? You need it as an energy source, right? And your body's, you always look at the car, fucking past and red lights on again. Right, you're, because your body's using it as a fuel, right? Energy source, and oh, 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 yes, it leaves protein energy source as well. Essential fats are nuts, butters, oils, avocados, right? But they're dangerous because they're very high in calories. I'll explain that in two seconds. So it's the same as the mechanic on the the validator, right? Good for your hair, your skin, your nails, your immune system, right? So if you go on a calorie deficit, I'm okay. I'm on a a bear, whatever they call you now. <laughs> Right. I'm on a calorie deficit, 2,000 calories, right? Lost weight, right? I'm going to keep it 1,900 the next week. 18, 16, 15. You get down to 12. Oh, did you see Oogie's lost some weight? But he's laying along the road there, racked. <laughs> right? He's not shoulder now. Hold on, hold on. That's it. Right, hold on. Hold on. We we'll go to this side, the exact same calorie deficit, right? Oogie knows his protein intake. Oogie knows his, his uh, car- carbohydrate intake. And Ogie knows his uh, essential fats. He does the same thing, right? But he gets down there to that weight and he's fit a cruise back up again, right? Because he's put oil in his car. He's put the right fuel in his car. And he's went to get the car washed, cleaned, and went to the mechanic. But what you do is you keep, when you're, when you're coming down, your energy expenditure's gone up. So you're doing a wee bit. Maybe you see it in the first week, you've done 45 minutes cardio. The second week, 50. See, you're only working with cardio, not weights, right? Whenever you get down here to that weight, you're going to crash and burn here because there's no oil. You've just, you just, you just winged it. But see here, you can start going back up again, bringing your calories up slowly. But you see, with, with your energy expenditure, when you get down here, you have to keep it there. You can't just go back up and just go, all right, I'll take five minutes off my cardio. You must keep that the same. And the weight well, comes that, off. That's far enough. I think I generalised that a little bit too much, but I just mean for... And you're paying general. for this year and I got that for free, obviously. Yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> take it to the bank. Well, anyway, right. We're there, right? You proved him wrong. You see, <laughs> this is moving on. No, I see. You know what? I'll take that one. On you the will. It was, I, I but was no, a no, no, I'm not taking the chin. But you, he's the type of man. He, he, see him. That's a sponge there. That's soaked up. That man's away with that. But... He, eh? He is that's the road bar. We're, we're, we're right now. And, that's not, and I, I don't know who your PT is. I don't want to know. But that's, I don't want him listening to anything here. I'm not. I'd say he knows it, knows it, or she it, or says your wanker. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what about we're here now? Where the fitness industry is a full of rise or what? Now yes. we've seen, we've seen it, we've seen it now mainstream. People is are it for it? Right? It, it is. Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is. Now, it's, 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 I am, am I against? Am I against? Am I against them? No, I'll tell you what I'm going to say because I've seen this firsthand. The Liver King, did you hear him? He's ah, come on. He so apologized today. He so, apologized. But you know what's going to happen now? The Liver King's come out with that. You are going to see more and more because this is the point I was making. Some of these guys want the limelight so much now. It's going to be cool to turn around and say, 
I'm sorry I told you this before. I didn't take gear, but that absolute them traps like staircases. Mm. It was gear. So he come out and he, he said, "Did you see him? What he was taking fourteen thousand yeah. dollars a month for for stuff." And like, have you seen this liver king? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, like the size of this man, yeah. right? I I'm just going to tell you, I feel, and you will be better fit to answer this. this way we're going to put this to you. But I feel I've seen these guys walking around and they're saying, "No, I'm not bullshit, bullshit," because like the. You don't get that, right? This is the one thing now I know from seeing and watching boys train. You do not get the size, the shape. I don't and all think that. you get that in the gym, though. See people that's taking gear, they tell you. Uh, well, there's, I'm, like, I'm watching one person in particular, right? And they're not from here, not from in this area. No, they're not from this area. Um, they're from this country, and they're coming on now two or three times to tell people they're not on steroids, right? There aren't steroids, one hundred percent. I know some, but some, right? But so, but if you're not on steroids, right? If you're not in steroids. You're not going to... You just don't say anything. Just let people... People... You've never heard me come on saying, oh, I'm not in steroids. Because I have taken them. So I'm not going to come on and say, I'm not taking them. Most of the people that come on that are massive, completely massive, and tell you they're not taking them, Liver King is taking them. Right? But I'm not against them. I'm not... Now, I'm against the abuse of them. Right, because... The, now you, there's use and there's there, abuse. Aye. Right, there's a massive difference between steroid use and steroid abuse. Yeah. And the, you know, like, well, we, we could go into the real specifics of cycling and cleaning and, and thing, But they're getting massive into these hormone uh, doctors now in America where guys are openly going and saying, I'm going to use anabolic steroids. I want to know when you keep a check on my kidneys, you t- keep a check on my liver. Uh, I want the right amount of test. You see, the problem, now, now you'll know this more than me, but... What I've read and what I followed, the problem with messing with your test levels as you go through that, when you come out of a cycle, the dip in testosterone is dangerous. The testosterone leads to, especially for men, for lots of functions. Your yeah. sex drive, your your just your your it affects your mental health. Depression. Right? Depression. Yeah. So when you spike it, your body stops producing it naturally. Yeah. So when you stop taking that. Yeah. Your body needs to be tricked into starting to reproduce. It doesn't need to trick it. It just has to... St- but it's like, do you ever see you go over to, to a lawnmower there and the wee boy at the bottom? The you, you, you hit her a couple of... You know, by the wee pump, pump, uh-huh. pump, pump. You, so, this is the way it works, right? But is that what leads to abuse? Because men do not want to dip it's out. No, it's, it's, no, it's, it's the size. It's, getting, it's to get bigger. Get bigger. The more gear you take, the bigger you think you're going to get. But I said this to Sean. And, and, but that's and, not true. Women are taking steroids oh, more, are, more than ever yeah, now. They are. And yeah. you, you looked at me. What did you say to oh, me when I said I, that? I thought he was full of shade. Oh, they do. I was what? like, no way. Like, mm-hmm. there's, they're, yeah. they're, right. Am I against that either? No, but if they're going to go do shows and go up against people, they have to take what, what, What's the difference? There's two. There's two. With st- women taking them and men. Women take, can take, or most, the most used one by a woman is uh, Anavar or Winstrel. Them's the two, and they take it in a real light dose. like, And it does. It, it, it can... Because like any females on here watching, you don't. I'm only giving you my experience and what I've read up and what I've 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 come across and what I've witnessed and what I've I've Aye. been through. Advice. It can balance a woman's hormones if done right, taken right. So the girl, a girl's different to a man. A, she has a, gir- cycles. a girl can't be in a calorie deficit for a month, a full month. So a girl can go in a calorie deficit in week one, week two of her menstrual cycle. Week three and week four, she must go into maintenance. So whatever weight she loses here, she has to try and maintain that with putting her calories up because her body needs more food. Because at the end of the day, it's going. A woman produces a a, a kid. So like at the end of the day, it's going. Her body's completely different to us. Us boys get it easy, like you know. So um, a woman is completely different to man, but they are. It's it's rife, like they are. They are they're at it, like you the know. Point, the point is. Right, and I said this. And Sean goes, "No, fucking me." And I said, "Sean, I'm telling you now, it's twice as hard for them to build them shoulders and neck, but but they, they would have to be okay if they if the women can can get a, a, a can get the turn of the physique of a man. They can get, get rolled, but if they're massive, if they're massive, they're on something. All right, they, I mean, they have to be like big muscle bellies and all on them. But like a woman can get really. What lean. I say to you about the belly? What I says the belly's blowing out like that. Muscle bellies, muscle yeah. means like blowing up, showing up. But the telltale signs is the bigger stomach, 
the men well you see some of the so I, guess, I, think I, I, think I, I think I seen was uh, if you have a high natural testosterone level you have a square face a, a broader jaw so like um, your finger if if your ring finger is longer than your index finger it's a sign of a higher uh, amount of testosterone you you naturally have higher Growth uh, hormone. Uh, aye, so that that, that that's the same. But you can see you can see some of them, and you see a lot of them. They, they go in the sunbed because the skin's getting bad because the excess oil is abuse in the, in the stories, and and they're trying to dry it and they're trying to counteract this. But I was watching this, and and and, and this is what it because I I'd be fascinated by this. You may not know this to look at me, you know, but there is an animal under here. Like. The <laughs> bear. You, you, the I still say steroids may. Enhance their performance, but you got to be doing something. If you just started injecting yourself up, well, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to put be, in the work. You have to put you the work. In the work. You have the diet. So you I'm not taking away from any. Oh, I yeah. And them guys, and it's their own. To be fair, uh, my opinion uh, is uh, it's their own. If people want to do it, do it. And if they don't, don't. Look, it's like anything that. in life, right? And I'm. I, I listened to Brian in here last week. I would have an addictive personality, right? So. It takes a good person to when keep me. When is the line. last time you've taken anabolic steroids? A real good dose of them. A real good dose. Well, just when is the last time? Are you currently on any? A real good dose of the gear would have been 2017. So you don't you don't bar now? No, no, no. As you get older, is it not more appealing? If I was to take stuff, right? If I was to take something, it would have to be right. So let's let's get the nitty gritty of what, what it does, right? So you're talking about abuse, right? And I thought about, we'll get into me. Right? And gear. So, if you abuse alcohol, which I've done, right? You're going down the long path, wrong path. If you abuse smoking, if you abuse sex, if you abuse anything, you're going to harm yourself. If you abuse steroids. No. Now, Ogie was hitting it kind of nearly in the head there. From what I... No, well, this is true. In America, if you go to the doctor with depression... Right, the first thing they're going to check is your test levels. In America, they'll inject you with testosterone. Yeah. Right, and you're going to feel good. Over here, they give you antidepressants, so you're going to go up and you're going to have to back down. So, when one of the number one killers for depression is low testosterone. Right, and this can be brought on through loads of things: not eating, stress, stress, no sleep, just heartbreak. All these things can lower your testosterone levels, right? So, for some, a man to run a thing called TRT, right? And I'm talking here, men, and they're over 35, 40 years of age. Test. Some because boys you're, don't, you're, some you're, boys just... Your test dips. Dip. Some, 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 some don't, some don't. You know, some don't, some you've plenty some, of... Just a bull like Plenty myself. of horny men out there that they're, they don't, don't drop, right? You're so, welcome, ladies. So, uh, <laughs> so that one, is all right. Uh, or just one lady. <laughs> <laughs> you're in trouble. Uh, so... Whenever you whenever you take that that you can run a TRT like it's like taking there's all different ways you can take I've seen I've known the ins and outs of it how it works right you can take it some boys harpoon themselves with a big needle into the hip or into the shoulder you can get like we instant needles you know the wee needles yeah. I use there like see, it's boys taking time but hormones so. need to be injected yeah if you do it if you want it clean and it's not going to go through your liver and so stuff like it's, that. For, it's it's people this is the thing about this right. The mindsets evolve, needles, dirty things. That we're talking hormones here. Yeah. If people are well educated in 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 what they're doing, well reversed in, in using intravenous and in using needles or whatever it is, but hormones, the likes of test, mm-hmm. they're injections. Yeah. They're, test. They're yeah, well you can get cream. You can cream. If, women, you, if you want them to work. You can cream, you rub you rub the cream in the skin and it works as well. No, a woman take it. But like I listened to James Smith and I've listened to him, I know him years, he was started off in the fitness industry around, well, a wee bit after me, and I mind him when he was nobody, and now he's massive. I listened to him on a podcast already talking to Sean Stafford, and they were talking about using gear. Yeah. If you use it right, it's going to help you. Yeah. But if you abuse it, you're, as you said there now, if you inject yourself on a Wednesday, right, or well, a Miller test, you dr- or t- Monday, you, dr- you inject yourself on a Wednesday, and you inject yourself on a Friday, right? And you do this for a, n- a number of eight, ten, 12, 20 weeks, or whatever. And then you just say, ah, oh, fuck, I was sitting there up last night. I'm not going to bother here taking my injection today. Your body then shuts down. And it goes, oh, where's my, where's my test on? Where, where's my... Next thing, it has to go into the bank to see is there any there. Then it has to... Try, as I said, you have the bleeder. And you have to wait till your test starts kicking. People say, oh, your test normally does kick back in again. 
you know. So you're actually using a liquid hormone and you've cut your own out for a large period of time. Then it takes a time to kick back in again. Like. There's people I know that actually had to take TRT to normalize, yeah. not to yeah. elevate their test. I had to get it back. They've abused themselves that long with 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 test cycles and not not done it right and not cleaned out and, and thing that they're taking TRT as a medicinal yeah. requirement because yeah. their own and it it massively affects your mental state of health. And I know we throw that about, but the chemical imbalance t- test is massively important. Women. That's why I was saying women. Well, maybe as you're saying, they can get the, women can't get the same size, bulk, mass, power that men have. But they don't produce testosterone. What well, did they take it? The will. I, I, but oh. but what I'm saying is, and it's become so clear in, yeah. in them the signs of the telltale signs of testosterone. But essentially, your balls shrinking because you're not producing them. That you're. You're doing this, but obviously I'm well reversed. I am massively. I I I read a lot of this, and I, I like to know, and I listen to a lot of podcasts, and listen to Liver King, and listen to them. And the reason was, I when I was a cub, and and I seen that back when I was a cub, thing and played the D ball type test and trend, and and I seen the part. I I remember going from benching 125 kilo or something, could never get past, couldn't get thing, trying to run a list, and the next thing it was 155 kilo, and I was like, this is the shit, right? But I was. It, if you seen what I was trying to do, and I look back and what I was training at, I'm like, why were you doing that? That was stupid. You near broke your back. You you know, it, it just was all. But at the time, in a small window, I seen, but it wasn't for me, and I'm not uh, high performer. But I straight away realized the increase in power capability very very quickly. That's more addictive than anything. Yeah. The that that you you think about this you you're you're putting your body through punishment for weeks and weeks on end and you've maybe only went up five kilo in the last two months. Somebody tells me in three weeks time, popping a lot of these, it's going to go up twenty. It's going to go up a hundred and fifty percent of what your your gains are with 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 these, and you're going to be like, I can do that. So it, it, I can see how it is. But what I was saying and what I was very clear about there was. You get these boys are massive and they're saying they're all people first, but people want to bring people down. So people's first thing is, oh, they're right head. Right? What? Because they've put in thousands of hours on their body and they've obviously enhanced it. They have taken stories. But it's a it's a cheap out for somebody else to say that. Because the work's gotta be paramount. Yeah. Because you take the roads, you just be a They're still at the gym every day of the week. Yeah. And like they're eating, the, and they're eating you know. the right stuff. It's allowing them to train at a higher level. Yeah. It's a performance. In, it's a PED. It's a performance. Yeah. So they're performing at a better level. Their body's responding better. Their mass is building. They're bigger. But it must require the work. But in sports, it's a bit dangerous. Yeah. In well, sports, it's going to give an, it's going to give you an enhancement. You know, like you see there the nights of Ben and, and the, the situations like that. If you if you're testing, and you're clean, and and somebody's in and they're testing and they're not, the edge they have on you. When when you experience what how much this can bring you on, and what it can do if you're taking and what it can't do, did you see that study with the two twins that one one took and one didn't, and the size difference and the yeah. and the thing? It was ridiculous what level he was operating at compared to our boy, and they were as fit as each other. But we've spent a lot of time. We're we're in that. We're in we're in the the anarchy of it. But I was in, I'll give you just how I how I learned about it. Like because people think all this. I went to a, a, the Irish Strength Institution in uh, uh, down in Dublin, but it's not Dublin. Before you come, it's on the left hand side. It's the swords, wee, swords down there, right? And that's where McGregor started off at doing his training with a boy, um, John. I may not went up to my gym to the Phil Graham seminar, and it was a boy, John Meadows. He's called the Mountain Dog. Look him up. He died last year. He took a heart attack. He was fifty, and he was a bodybuilder, and that's who taught me about steroids. And he says. Bodybuilding is like a game of cards, right? You've got the boys that Ogie's talking about there, just lift the cards and fire the whole thing in, right? And then you've got the boys that play the card. So they play the diet, play the gym, that card. Then they play wee bit onivore. Then they play a test. Then they play uh, clan. And there's all these different things. They play the card. They play the game and play it nice and slowly. And then they don't be affected. Where as you're talking about these boys, I'm 25, 26. I want to look like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm just going to take this deck of cards and just fire it all into the game, and that's whenever you have complications. So it was, it was uh, John Meadows. Anybody's listening here, look him up on 
Instagram. I know he's dead. God rest him. But he he's a man that, that taught me. So tell me, you're talking about fueling the body. Yeah. What about these meals that they've got out here, kid? I'd have brought you a few. Brought us a few out. I brought you a few. I was hoping that I was going to see your lovely face on them. Why is their face removed? Sean, Sean. Well, worse than the back. <laughs> I was down the town one day, sitting having a coffee. Ghost old boys. There's this face about seven feet tall on the side of this transit van, boy. And somebody enhanced the hair. Somebody enhanced <laughs> the hair on that. Because he walked by me and I was like, that picture wasn't taken the day or yesterday, was it? <laughs> <laughs> we love, we, the pictures are the, gone. The, I, the, the sales the, have gone up. Since the face came on. From the face is gone. On D. Graham called me uh, Daniel O'Donnell. He says I thought of Daniel O'Donnell on the side of the van. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, uh, look, to back, meals, how are they going? Uh, look, I, I'll give you the story of the meals. The meals, I'm not going to bullshit anybody, right? The meals come about out of pure, it was just pure luck, right? I would have, Hutton's meals, right? I'm, I, I name everybody, Ampax, everybody's at Hutton's meals was kind of the really first person kind of that I seen doing it. But they actually did it through me. And Garth will actually tell you that because I used to buy my meats. At the time, mine I was doing the, the road to Boston. Then yes. I, I got torn back and didn't get in. <laughs> oh, so, an absolute uh, balls of an operation. <laughs> oh, way. And I, I was YouTubing at that time, too. Oh, I was getting some views. Fuck I, LSTV. LSTV. This big follow me to this IBM. I get sponsors and everything for that. Next and, thing, I, I, I didn't get in. I got torn away. And, and Jesus. I oh, wasn't allowed in America. Was, after, right, I'm going to say this here. What At no point did somebody think, I need to make sure that this is all going to work out. And, uh, but I was in America twice. I was in America. Oh, I was in New York in right, 2008, right? right, 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 right. And I signed a, I, I'd done the green card. And the green yeah. card says, have you been in, have, have you been in prison for terrorist or drug offences? And I ticked no. So I get in. Went again to Vegas. And it was, have you been in prison in the last five years or for drug or terrorist offences? And I ticked no. And I'd been out seven years. And then I went to go again in 2017. And I just says 10 days before, fuck, I must do this Esther here, you know, on v- or v- visa. And I take, have you ever been in prison? And I take, yes. Now, if I had taken no, the likely would never have found out, but I wanted to be honest. And I take, yes, fucking bang, you're not getting in. And I had flights, accommodation. I was sitting sub 10% body fat. Still had an hour, two weeks to go. I would have won it. Like, it's hands down. It wasn't, you could have smelt the shit through me. Like, like I was talking about Brian Cassidy, the way he went, that like, I was on the same, same level. Like, and uh, I got turned away, like so. As I say, well, that's an our story. LSTV and YouTube, you can see watch them all. It actually was very good, so it was. I was getting the, some views. The, only the conclusion was uh, uh, the airport lounge was great, but uh, the flight wasn't so good. But then, then mind, uh, I went to go again to do it in London. I put my back out. I had to get back surgery. <laughs> You'd have be been better uh, documenting God. the whole thing and releasing it after to make sure it all uh, worked out. But. Anyway, I went into Garth, and Garth was doing my meats for me, and he was weighing them out and all for me. And I goes, Garth, you wouldn't cook them for me. He said, no, I'm not better. No, I said, please cook them for me. So he did it for me, right? And he cooked them, and I started putting them up on social media. Like, they talk about social media, the amount of people that I did. Like, I mean, D. Graham. D. Graham, I mean, getting into D. Graham's... Uh, li- he, was, he was living... Honestly, you have to get... Like, D. was living in a this wee, tiny mobile house, and he had this room at the back of the house with these suits in it, but they're his suits. And I, I, I would sit at him, I'd go up and look at them. And he was toying with it at the time, like, and he'd go up and I'd say, give me that suit there, I sell where to add, and I'll put it up on social media. And like, and then Garth Hutton had started, at, and I goes, Garth, put the, I'd put them, i put them up on social media. It's just, this is the power of social media. And I just put them up in my stories. And like, people think I'm going to be here today. I'm here for me. I'm here because I want to see your podcast blowing out of the water. Because I know for a fact people's going to watch this because I'm on it. And they are, are they, they are hate me. Come on now, you better mean to go there, lad. Uh, but I thought you didn't. <laughs> I, I, but there's only one handsome stranger around here when they go, that's his. But I, I, get, I get this thing, oh, he's on these things, he's trying to, he's trying to promote his business. I don't need to promote my business. Well, the question to me, Ryan, we're, we're, we're there just, I'm jumping in us in the middle of that. But this it's relevant now to what you're saying. When, you know, you're on social media, you're out there, lad. There's some people going to be like, well, he's showing the, the glamour of his life and mm-hmm. don't want to see you having that. Don't want to see... Well, a lot of people don't want anyone to see it. But what, what way what way do you handle that? Because there's hate that comes with that. 
I don't really get any, and I can be honest with you. The only hate I've got recently, and I told you, was on on that that article in the paper. But it was no one that knew me, not one person that knows me or knows of me or or buys off me or anything turned against me. They just anybody that knows me knows I wasn't on there to promote my business. I was on there. I always come on to things like I'm going to Dublin next week, right? Nobody likely would have knew about it. I actually mentioned to. This man has this man has a face for here, boys. I, don't know. <laughs> I know, I know. Guys, I tell you what, the for <laughs> I'll tell you what. This the 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 male Mona Lisa's over there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the uh, Mona Lisa and the what? <laughs> <laughs> I I says to him, and I was saying, to him, you know, you know, maybe you come down to me and and, and take a bit of because I want to show people what I actually do for nothing. I just do, I do this stuff for not. I don't need to go to Dublin. Like I'm going into a secure. Well, then some would say I'm going into a secure a secure unit. What do you need? The people like in, What do you need then? Anyone seen that? Say it again. Then some might say, "What do you need? Anybody seen that?" For? Because I want other people to reach out and ask me to come and do it for them. Right, and that's a fair enough point because. And I, I'll do it for nothing. No, but I, I want to ask that because people will say that, mm-hmm. and they will want to know and say, "You're doing that for your own how gratification." Much, how, much, how much does I offer to go to Dublin next week? I don't know. No idea. Give me a figure, man, and I'll show it to you. A man making no like you, you know. five five hundred quid. I was offered, and there's funding. I says, you know what? Give it back to those. Give it back to them. And the I was offered money to give them a gap. I says, put it into something else. I says, that's my way of giving back. Well, what's your goal then? Where where, where do you want? You want to give back? You want to <laughs> help to make sure that if you maybe you maybe don't like social media, but you like the I, opportunities it gives you. Honestly, no. I, I think he loves that. Hey, if look, I told you the other day, and and we're not going to. I haven't been made an offer, but there's somebody interested in, I'm not going to say, and it could be life-changing for me, right? Life-changing. And it could see me disappearing. And I, I, I am, I'm ready for that. Like, I'm ready. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't like social media. I, don't, I just don't like it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I be, right, I'll give you an example. My, I have a couple of weeks, and I'll, I'll, I'll give the figures, right? There's a, a wee account I have there. It's an online account. Can kick the ass of fourteen, fifteen hundred pound a week, right? And I had an off week there, just an off week. wasn't feeling me, wasn't feeling Ryan, I wasn't LS, right? And I went into a bit of a head under the 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 the, the, the pillar. It wasn't bad, like just I lost about six to seven hundred pound that week because I wasn't online. So if I want to have a quiet week and make no money. Get off, I'm off social media. My dad says to me, get off that social media. Get off that social media. But see now, get on it. He is me. Get on it. It's funny you say that because it's no, it's no different to, to me. Oh, I have a live draw tonight and I do a live broadcast or a video and say there's a draw tonight. 20,000 people see that. 10% remember. 2,000 people go to buy a ticket. If I'm busy for whatever reason, I don't get around to doing that. See if somebody says to me, I'll oh, go and do this. And that means I don't have time to do that. That's exactly what that's costing to go and do that. Yeah. It's costing them yeah. sales. But it, it, it's what I say to you. It's a double-edged sword. You can use it for, you can wield it. And now, you, I do genuinely, and I'm going to say to you, I would have said you're full of shit if you're full of shit. I do believe you in, in what you're saying that you, you want to do. I don't a hundred percent believe you that you don't enjoy it. Uh, no, I, 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 okay. A man, okay, a man here a, loves it. A man with a seven foot picture of himself hey, inside of a van. But, t- but, but I took it down. I took it off. That you're, we, that's where, you're on about the picture. That's why I took it off. I, I just, I was going to. So well, was, then you've come full circle. I was going to. I was, was, was going into the shop, right? The man and his wife once was doing a TikTok. I was going into the shop, right? And someone walking up the shop. Looking at me and looking at the, and I was going. And I was actually getting embarrassed, and I should have been like proud, you know. But I just, I just said, no, take me off the front of that. I don't want to be on there no more. But at the other way, did I put myself in the front of it, right? People buy people, right? So people knows I'm into fitness. They know I'm into healthy food. They know I'm into that. So they were looking and saying, who, who? Maybe they didn't catch the logo because the logo's a gym thing. Then they seen me and says, yes, I must. And then there's people's had there's people's had dinner with me. They don't like me, like. You know what? Let's have let's have yeah, dinner with me now. One or two people have said to me, "I have to admit, they're good." Like, aye, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I went into twenty four hour to get you guys three meals there. There was a hundred meals nearly into yesterday, and I, I honestly, if you go on to my, I put it on my like, hey, there's me social media. Took it out, bang. Says, the girl come over the shop. You can hear her talking to me. What, what are you doing to your camera? I says, "Oh, I move these." Oh, right, right, right. The, them meals are great. You can hear her in the background, like. 
I, I, that was me promoting the 24 hour. They've done a deadly. Uh, Seen that as well. Uh, what do you call it? Um, refurb. Shop re- refurb. Like, it's class. So, like, there's there's the social media right, in, right away. I know right away when that's marketing. I was marketing from 2008 and I didn't even know I was doing it, 2009. But are you ready to quit it? Aye, am I? Um, it's done a full, because as good as it is, it's unhealthy. I am. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I, I'm ready to go. Like, see if I'm in the company of people, right? And, and I hope they, 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 they do understand. They, I don't use my phone when I'm with people. You know, if, I, if I'm with someone who I care about and I'm in their company, I want their attention. I don't want social media attention. Right? So, like, you, you'll vaguely see what I'm doing at the weekends. Like, you'll see me training. You'll see me out. Like, I'll put up a meal, bee's griddle. Why do I do that? Because Sheena works in bee's griddle, loves me putting it up, because she knows people's going to see, see that and come in for people to travel from all around. I have, I have both him and his bra on <laughs> Snapchat. So he'll put up like this avocado and thing in a dry bacon. And his boy will put up deaf in a box. <laughs> and he's that. But he just put up, a, even today I see him, bees is out of the gate. And it's just cheese and it's gravy. And it's the that, that's uh, Kevin Quinn, <laughs> Quinn M Sport. If you want who it is, another b- part of the, the family business. Another we actually, we've, we've, we've actually, um, the, the, we've took over the well, the families took over the Port Hotel in Port of Ferry. So now, yeah, I, am, I did out. see a snap of food the other day. Yeah, I didn't know you were taking over that. And yeah. It did look. No, it oh, was class. It, the chowder yeah. looked. Oh, it looked. But good. what I done? I I got the chowder and, and I got the small chowder and the wheat bread and all and the uh, wooden thing. You no, know, it reminds me of. Really, it reminds me of the the. It reminds me of the remore. Not, not I'm saying the food's lovely, but see the satin and you. You go to Strangford, get on the ferry, come across, get your food. Or if you're going to stay for the night, then go down into. Because you're the aquarium. Aye, uh, the aquarium as well up there, and we have a bar in Kilcobbin called the Mermaid. Right. So you'll walk and you'll see a key Quinn above the door, and then you go on down into Bangor. We have Picky Park as well. So stop in Picky Park. And it says Santa, Santa, Santa's in it. I think Santa's in it next week, so. Uh, and I'm just going to take my tires off because I'm promoting the boxers here as well. Uh. Uh, so, um, but I, that's why I come off the front of the food. food. I genuinely go on social media to help other people. No. Genuinely. No. What I'm saying is I've seen you come full cycle. Because mm-hmm. there was a time there when you were on it, I honestly thought you were going to put up when you are going to take an next shade. <laughs> so it has to have come full circle. Yeah, people are, are you're like, and that's the thing. This is the thing with all of us. If I judged you now, Sean, for how you were when you were younger, you know, we've all had lived the life and changed and, and changed our ideas and mindsets and and things that have affected us, change who you are now. If if, if you're saying that as in now, a hundred percent. If you're saying that as full time, that you weren't always on promoting yourself. Oh, I was, I was. I, 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 I that's at a certain time, I was. Oh, right. But not, not But that's not, what I'm saying. No, no. no, but, no. But because and there's people still will say, I'm talking shade here. Like, but I don't, I honestly, honestly don't care and I don't have to prove them. He, he, you come full circle, right, to where you're sitting now. And I love where you're at. I love watching you. Like, I, can, I hear plenty of people saying, oh, he only is this because of that. He's only this. I know him. I know how he works. So <laughs> I just not, besides just keep watching him. Like I watched the podcast. I watched the first podcast. Was great. The two years on together. The very end, you started just bore me at the very end. But the very start, oh, come very on, good. I, come I would on. just. But then, you, but, but that's the funny thing. There was sections there, and I says this. We were maybe discussing say it was wrong or something. There's not of any appeal to people, right? Yeah. But then there was a couple of other men rang me up, and I was like, the funny thing for me and Sean is, we haven't found our niche yet. We haven't found where where, where we go. We have. We had one rule to each other as as long as we're having the crack and then it doesn't feel like work, well yeah. then we're rock and roll. And if people like it, they like it. And if people are sitting in the toilet thinking, Sean, well, that's their own progress. Keep your opinions there, <laughs> Yeah. I like how Sean threw it in there, shut him down, fuck you. You know who you are. Yeah. Don't bag. Simply lovely. <laughs> but... No, I, I, I honestly, I, anything I do now, it, it honestly, hand and heart is for other people. Honestly, hand and heart. I don't, I, I don't, honestly, I don't think I ever put myself first. I would give somebody food before I would eat. I would, uh, genuinely, and that's not me. I don't want, I'm not trying to pull in people here. Like, that's who I am. You know what I mean? And if some people just aren't going to believe that. 
you know, and that's because they don't want to. They just don't want to. There's something inside them. But as I say, there's lots of people out there have had dinner with me. They don't like me. And that's well, through, through, the, through these meals. We're going to have a few. We're going to have a few. Tell me now, Ryan, much is a meal? A meal in the, a retail in the shop is £5. And online, if you're buying them, they're in around about £4. But then you've got your... Your thing on top. Now, what's the difference? Now, I, I need to, I can't have walked away and didn't tell this. What's the difference in my meals and a lot of other meals? Some of them are very similar to me, right? This is how it's done. So, we, we talked about how to get into it. I got a fa- an Instagram message in November 2019. Would you be interested in putting your face in the front of these meals? I says, no. We'll get back to Hutton because never finished that. So, Hutton's meals are great, right? But after two or three days... You know, if you don't have the meeting, and they will tell you that they're, they're, they're not going to be as nice, all right? These here get 14 days, all right? And again, Hutton's, I, I've at the meals out of Forbes, I still do, so it's not that I'm saying there's anything wrong on there 100%, but how, how do these differ from everybody else's, right? And maybe Hutton's could be still the same as these. I was going to get myself in a bit of a, maybe a bit of a handle here with, with my old mate. But this is what's happening with a lot of these companies, right? Owen, you're the chicken supplier. You're the curry supplier. Um, Aiden's the rice supplier. Right, that's only three things we need. So we're making a chicken curry, right? You're selling me a hundred. So we'll just say we'll go small. A hundred kg of rice. It's frozen. It lands to me frozen, right? I put it in my freezer. You're giving me curry sauce, frozen. I put it in my freezer, and you're giving me what are you on rice? Chicken. 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 Right, chicken. You're a chicken. He's rice. I've got it. Right. And it's frozen. I defrost that. I put it in the container. Goes around my wee fancy machine. Seals up. On goes the sleeve. Out it goes. That's a frozen meal you've bought. The defrosted meal. Right? And this is how these people sell them cheaper. If you look at them and you hold them up, you'll see the water. You'll see the condensation on the top of them. Because you've bought frozen food. Right? Now, how does mine work? And are different. We have a chef. He cooks everything. Once it comes out of the, the oven, pipe and hot, it goes into a blast cooler. It brings it from 200, 300 degrees or whatever it is, right down to, to 4 degrees. That locks all the nutrition in, right? All your nutritional values, right? Once it comes out of there, it never goes above 4 degrees. Rice never goes above 4 degrees. All our sauces are made in-house. We don't buy in. We don't ring up uh, Sean and say, Sean, can we have more curry? Ours is all handmade, water based or tomato based, and then once you go into my, if you, I've done videos uh, um, a while, a couple of years ago there of the kitchen, we have fair play to them all, and they're all legends. They're snooted up, and it's freezing in there, four degrees, and they're weighing it out, right? Once it goes into them trays, them trays go into another uh, cooler, and then they're sealed, they're 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 they're, they're gas sealed, right? And you get fourteen days. So you can take those. Because you I can was take those. Ask you how how That's a freshly cooked meal, but it's something that I, I read this too. Something about blast cooling something kills the bacteria. Yeah, so stuff. It's all does it. It's and uh, we cannot let those meals go above four degrees. Once they go four degrees, then we start to lose the, the sell by date. So you'll see them in the shop. If you go in the shop and you see one that's in date and it's pumped up, it's blew up. They have they have the shop is either. Uh, le- has left it out too long or somebody's left it and but if it sits out too long it'll start blowing up because I took a few out of the, the fridge last night in my fridge because I got to be honest with you I'm, I'm prepping at the minute to put on a bit of muscle and stuff like that and just get in a better shape because of the injuries I've had so far and I just took them out of the fridge because I want to do a bit of cooking myself and you see just overnight boom blew up like balloons so um, they have to stay below 4 degrees and like whenever you take everything in you, the sleeve costs money The pa- it's, well this is what I was going to ask you now Everything's gone up. Yeah. The price is still the same. Uh, but I, 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 the I, margins must get in tighter. I, I, I just took, I, I'm taking the hit, like, mm. you know, I just, like, ah, things are hard enough. Look, if, if LS Meals closes in the morning, I'm not, I'm, I'm nothing to lose, like, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I, I've got my suppliers, my supplier. I could go and start opening up my own kitchen and have the hassle, like, we have kitchens here, there, and everywhere, the Crumb, Pecky Park, there's kitchens everywhere, so, but I don't want that hassle, like, you know? So, um, that's that's how I get into it. I'm going to do an honest review. Ryan has proudly sponsored me a lifetime subscription of 
badass meals, which was very good of you, right? <laughs> and uh, that's all I'm going to eat over the next month. And w- tune in and follow my weight loss. But you're asking me how they're going. Now, I'll tell the truth. Now, they started off, the st- I'm at it now, no, nearly three years, is it? So it started off a silo box. The next thing, I was up to 200. The next thing, I was up to 400. The next thing, I'm 500, 600, 700. Started like coasting there at 700. The next thing, I started to go around the shops. January, February, and March this year, we were pumping out two, two and a half, three thousand meals and killing it. I was everywhere, everywhere, every shopping end, every spa, every center. I was everywhere. Next thing I get this phone call from Henderson Group. I hadn't clue who the Henderson Group is. And this is how I went full circle because, and you'll know, because I would have done a stupid thing here. So Henderson says they wanted to meet me. So my old boy, the man he is, he's not stupid. He says, these guys are going to, he says, they're going to uh, screw you to the ground. He says, he says, I'm telling you. He says, we're going to talk to them anyway. So I brought a, another right uh, well switched on businessman on me. And he sat with me in the meeting. So the boy came in and he started. He says, look, how are you in all these shops? And you're independent and blah, blah, blah. And I says, look, this is the way it is, blah, blah, blah. He says, right, we want you to come on board with us. You need to sell so many meals a week, so on and so forth. So if I would have said yes to those boys, right, they could have took about 10,000 meals a me a week, right? Left back 3,000, not paid me for 90 days. I was getting, I had a my supplier to play. I was to get money out of it. Henderson was to get money out of it. And the shop was to get money out of it. There was nothing left for me and should have been closed down. And when I refused, they, they fixed my wagon like. You're really? talking a billion pound company. They started to put blockages up and I wasn't allowed to put so many in here and I wasn't allowed in here and I wasn't allowed in there. And They just brought me back nearly, not to square one, but till a nice wee number, but not with what I was doing. Like, But now in the last wee while, People have got sick of the other ones and the, 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 the frozen ones, the ones that are, and they, they know the difference. They can get the texture, the taste, and all that there. And because it's, it's I have tried other ones, right? I have tried. I, agree with me. I, I would like to cook most of the time. I love cooking. But uh, I have tried. Some of them have done different ones. Some of them uh, you can eat for a while. But just after a while, hey, something about it. You just like. Can't microwave anything else. Yeah. I need to cook something. I need something cooked for me. You know, and there is now as well as you can replicate now, and I have tried one or two, I was I was blaggering you. I tried the pepper chicken, it was good. Like, but um I seen you're doing the pancakes and different things yeah. and changing there now. You do have to keep the variety going. Yeah. Because people will just there's you know, obviously you're looking the the, the marketing program and to keep them five pounds, you're wanting somebody that's that's investing a wee bit in the health and saying, Right, I'm gonna replace my wheels three out of four days this week because I'm here, there and everywhere and you know, they're, they're in a pattern, they're buying a few at a time. They're buying a few at a time. Yeah. And they're training. But if they're shite after a while, that's one week. You've got one week at that. Yeah. You've got one cycle at that. Yeah. And uh, but no, look, listen. Well, here, guys. I don't know about you, but I am hungry. <laughs> We're gonna try ready one. for a feed here. We're gonna try one, Sean. Gonna Aiden's going to bring them up in the bottom corner. But Aiden, I want you to bring them up just here. The one with his big face on the front of her. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, thanks very much for coming on. You mm-hmm. are a colourful character, no matter what you say. I still think you love a wee bit of the, the old attention on those social. Uh, I'm going to finish on that now, but I'm going to attention from the right but people. You yeah. know what? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I, I, I believed you there. I believed you there, and for play to you. Uh, but thanks for coming on. Having Very interesting. With us. Yeah. And uh, look, I would say this is not the last we'll hear. We'll get you back on at some point. Uh, but uh, thanks for the meals and thanks for the lifetime sponsorship for me and Sean. That was just wild, decently wild, decently. Uh, that's us. I'll say one more thing, boys. Right? See if we can't keep our country up right here. Keep our LS. <laughs> what? <laughs> We'll finish it down there.